Hi everyone, I'm Dr. David Wackenfeld, the Chief Scientist at the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, and I'm here with another of our weekly reef health updates. Now, I'm sure you can tell from the background that I'm not filming this in our usual location. Because of the COVID-19 working from home requirements, I'm actually filming on my back veranda. The first thing I really want to emphasize is that although of course we are concerned that the Great Barrier Reef is experiencing a third coral bleaching event in just five years, we are also acutely aware that the COVID-19 virus and the associated travel restrictions is creating extremely difficult economic conditions both for reef tourism businesses but also the broader community of people in the reef tourism industry. We are working very closely with the reef tourism community and doing everything that we can to support them in these very difficult times. The aerial surveys for coral bleaching that were led by the ARC Centre of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies were finished last week. They surveyed more than a thousand reefs across the length and breadth of the Great Barrier Reef and they found very variable results. So they found reefs that were moderately and severely bleached, widely spread throughout the Great Barrier Reef, but they also found reefs with no or negligible bleaching. Importantly, we've seen reefs, particularly in the south of the reef, that have bleached for the first time severely in 2020. So they did not bleach severely in 2016. But we've also seen reefs that have bleached severely in 2016, 2017, and again this year in 2020. And so the spatial pattern of bleaching is really quite variable in different parts of the park. We will of course have a better picture of that when the analysis of the data is complete in a couple of weeks and we have an actual map of the severity of the bleaching. One of the really important things for us to stress is that most of the tourism areas of the reef suffered either no negligible or moderate bleaching, and that's relatively good news. There's only really one exception to that, which is one of the tourism areas in the south of the Great Barrier Reef, which did suffer severe bleaching. But overall, this is a relatively good news story in an otherwise uh, quite concerning coral bleaching event. There are a couple of points that I think it's important to clarify. First of all, although we are now using the term mass bleaching event, this does not mean that all of the coral or even all of the reefs on the Great Barrier Reef have bleached in this event. The results of the aerial surveys are very variable. We have everything out there from severely bleached reefs to reefs with absolutely no bleaching whatsoever. Now that's critical. The second thing I want to clarify is that coral bleaching is a stress response. A bleached coral is stressed and it is starving, but it is not dead. Particularly on reefs where the bleaching severity was negligible or moderate, we will probably see many, perhaps most, of those corals survive. And of course that's incredibly important for the recovery potential of the reef into the future. On the reefs, that are more severely bleached, of course, we are concerned that we are likely to see higher, though still variable, levels of coral mortality. Of course, we have operational constraints because of social distancing and traveling rules uh, because of COVID-19, and that is affecting our field management program. But nonetheless, we still have rangers and boats out there on the water in the marine park. And one of the jobs that those rangers are doing is to conduct bleaching impact assessment surveys. And so those in-water surveys will complement the results that we already have from the aerial surveys. Now in the longer term, it will still be the long-term monitoring program of the Australian Institute of Marine Science that provides us with critical ongoing reef health information, particularly helping us understand both the cumulative impacts of the various events that are affecting the reef, but also the recovery processes and how reefs and corals are recovering in between extreme events. Because we are now out of the summer peak risk period and the reef has actually cooled very rapidly over the month of March, we're now going to revert to doing these reef health updates on a monthly basis, not a weekly basis. 
Having said that, however, as important information comes to light, for example, the results from the aerial surveys, we will be delivering that to you in as timely a fashion as we can. I'm going to sign off now. Please stay safe, everybody. These are very challenging times for everyone, and I will see you for the next Reef Health Update. Thank you.